Hey, thank you very much for joining us for the first Solutions Lab webcast of 2021. I have with me today Mike Brooks from Cisco. He's a uh, business development management manager in the collab uh, area of Cisco. And I'm Aaron Shelton, a sales engineer here at DNH. Uh, today we're going to talk to you about uh, a lot of new features in WebEx. There's also some new hardware to cover. Uh, so we're really going to cover those. We have some demos for you uh, and a lot of great detail that will help you as a partner to transact Web WebEx, whether you're selling it now or looking at uh, moving into it in the future. Uh, very quickly here, there are a few features that you have in your viewer window. There are some resource links over on the right side. Uh, you do have the ability to change the slide size. You can change video size. Uh, so you can mess with the windows a little bit and get your best viewing experience on that side of things. Uh, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and jump in here and start our discussion. Um, Mike, we have uh, Flex3 that just came out. This is a new way of building WebEx. Uh, that's uh, a little bit more granular in the way we do things. Um, so there's the meetings, calling, messaging. Tell us a little bit, bit about the Flex3 capabilities that we have. Yeah, absolutely, Aaron, and thank you for having me. I appreciate it. So with, with Flex3, right, this is the new type of version of Flex itself, right? If many of you remember, Flex was originally launched maybe about a year ago, right? And, and, and it had meeting and calling and messaging in there, in there right? Um, with this new Flex3 model, it's really kind of similar feature and functionality with some new features that we're going to talk about today. And, but the big thing with Flex3 is that there are a boatload of <clears throat> price changes that took place as well, knocking down the price as well, and then still including all of the features and functionalities that you have, right, which we're going to talk about. The good thing about it is, is now, if you remember previously, we had like a WebEx desktop app. You had your um, messaging client referred to as Teams at the time, right? And you had your WebEx client. Now everything is kind of thrown in together into this messaging client. Um, so we have this unified app. And re what really makes it really cool is all of that messaging, meeting, and calling is all integrated into that single pane of glass, which is the most important thing that we've been trying to get to for a while, and we're finally here. So we're super excited for having everything underneath that one single pane of glass or that unified app to give the ability to do messaging, meeting, calling, however you want to in that single pane of glass. Yeah, indeed, and I, I'm very excited about that one. From an administrative standpoint, uh, it's a great move because we, we're not installing multiple applications on a person's computer. They have one app that they can go to. And within that, administratively, we can actually control those different modules, can't we? So if we don't want someone to have messaging, but we want them to have meetings, we can do that in the app, can't we? Yeah, absolutely, right? So one of the coolest things that we have from an administrative or IT perspective is that, remember, everything is managed through a central control hub, right? So inside that control hub, as we're doing our deployment, we can buy a variety of various licensing, right? And then assign that licensing to what we want that particular person to have. As you said, we can go in and click meetings for one person or the combination of the three for another person. And we can monitor each one of those applications inside the control hub as well, but it is one central location. So it makes it really easy for the IT or the admin guy to maintain and keep control of the environment. Indeed, and from a user standpoint, again, you're only looking at one application, so it's good there. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the key components that's here now is uh, WebEx calling that's based on the broad cloud system that uh, Cisco purchased a while back. Uh, you guys have really added a lot of features to this. You've built up what its capabilities are. And uh, at this point, you have mm -hmm. a full-fledged calling solution through this. So we can take and answer phone calls from a phone, a mobile phone with the app, a computer with the app, um, what are some of the other broad cloud advantages and, and cloud advantages here with uh, the newer system? So from our standpoint, what we're kind of looking at is we really took this broad cloud calling that was there and kind of brought it over and renamed it a little bit and called it WebEx calling, which was the first thing, right? To go with the nomenclature of everything else WebEx, right? WebEx meetings, sure. WebEx messaging, whatever it may be. Um, you know, everything is still simple in that particular portion of things where when I do have my messaging client open, right, it's still a big green button, 
right? I can, if someone happens to call me, I click that big green button to answer the call. I can determine where I'm going to answer my call, right? So for example, or you know, if you were to call me today, um, I'm sitting upstairs in my living room, not downstairs in the basement, because both of the kids are in school. I can have, pick it up and have it say, all right, I'm gonna answer through my headset here. Or if I had a desk phone at my desk, I could have it go to the phone or I could have it go to a video device. So I determine exactly where that call gets answered. Um, you know, and, and the good thing about it is, you know, when somebody calls, obviously, as you can see from the icon that's on the screen, it does show their picture, their name, their work number, and where we're going to answer that particular device. But the follow-up afterwards is key as well. Right. So after we have the call, I can send a quick little right click and send a message to whoever that per person is to um, let them know. Thanks for the call. Thanks for your time. And here's the follow up for the information that we needed. Right. So once again, leading back to that single unified app, but the calling experience is much better under this environment instead of having three disperse. Indeed. Our, our team is fully integrated with uh, the messaging and calling and all that stuff. So I use that feature a lot. Well, I'll, I'll talk to uh, one of my coworkers on the phone. And as soon as I'm off, I can send them a PDF of something that we're talking about or whatever it is that related to the call. Um, and it's all in that same platform. So I don't have to go anywhere. Uh, it's already open. I can drop the file. Uh, good to go. And it's there's a nice little follow up that kind of happens there when you're working in one single platform for all those services. Um, now, one thing that uh, you guys just recently added is actually it, it, well, two parts of this. Uh, one, there's cloud connected PSTN. So at one point, there's a router that was needed on prem. That's not needed anymore. Uh, and then the other thing is a new Cisco option for uh, you guys are actually hosting the PSTN service itself. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so one of the the things that people have kind of been asking for all along was, you know, when we ordered Flex or WebEx meetings and calling kind of thing, there was a third party PSDM provider that was out there and they really wanted Cisco to become that provider, so to say, or the provider on record. And when we originally purchased Broadsoft, right, we always had that type of PSTN model out there. We were a regulated carrier, but we kind of pulled it back a little bit. Now we're bringing it back into the mainstream, right? So this really allows us now to, you know, uh, maintain market share, right? And as Hector is saying in one of the questions in Q&A, right, is Cisco was losing a little bit of market share in particular places with all the competition out there, right? And nothing against the competition, and not to say that because I work for Cisco that I don't use any of those other devices as well in home, right? Sure. These kids are on one model, somebody's on another. So with this PSTN kind of being integrated and all of the devices that we have, all the new features and functionality we're talking about really leads to what will bring WebEx back to the forefront of everything is the experience. Right. This really comes down to the experience. Right. And then the price as well comes into play. But it is the experience. And this PSTN actually allows us now to create that motion. So you can actually have your meeting, calling and messaging and Cisco be your PSTN provider and receive that single bill or single invoice that we all have been looking for. Right. Yes. Admin IT, the admin is much easier as well, right? So I believe with this PSDN connection, we're on the forefront of something big, and I'm looking forward to it. it from the invoicing standpoint, I think that simplifies things a lot. We, we still have the same uh, billing models where you could choose monthly, you can prepay. If you have a multi year contract, you can pay for those annually. So there's a lot of, way to break, a lot of ways to break down that cost. But now included in that, if you want to use Cisco's PSTN, you can do that. Uh, U.S. list price on that is is about three dollars fifty cents per user per month, um, and the, there's usually some local taxes and stuff that go along with that. Um, how does that show up uh, for the customer or for the partners when they've ordered that for a customer? Great question as well, right? So we've done two things, right? So for those of you that have, you know, been purchasing WebEx all along, you you know how the invoicing comes over, right? It lists the licensing up on top with the cost. And then if there's any audio overages or usage and things like that, they're always listed separate at the bottom of the invoice. And it ultimately resulted in you guys, the partner, trying to uh, put that 
invoice together on a single invoice. In this particular model, we know that when it comes to taxes and fees with PSTN, depending on the location that you're in, right, city, state, county, town, they're always going to be different, right, which is not fun to manage, right? So what we're going to do on our end is twofold. Um, we're actually going to make it easier for distribution to be able to provide back to the end customer, this is you, what the invoice looks like, but also make it easier for the partner to look at. So when now we're going to actually have two invoices that we're going to send over to the distributor, and I know I just said single bill, so hear me out here in a second, right? Sure, we're sure, going to send sorry. over two invoices for you guys, one that shows the cost of the licensing and one that shows the administrative taxes and fees, and it's going to be broken down by why that charge is there, right? Very easy for you guys to combine those two together, right, and send a single bill and then both of the copies to the end customer so that or to the partner so that they can actually see where those charges are coming from, right? So in the beginning, Perfect. it'll be these two separate invoices, but eventually our goal is to get to at the point to where we can combine them all together into one with the explanation and definitions of each one and the usage account so that you can see it so it's easy to read. Okay, fantastic. So, so on the partner side, there's really nothing that they need to do in their locality to figure out what the taxes are going to be. Cisco's taking care of all that. You you get that cost, you pass it along to your end user, and that part's pretty much done. Um, now I'm really excited to move into the meeting side of this. Um, so with WebEx, there's the calling, meeting, messaging. Uh, moving into meetings here, uh, I want to start with a demo uh, that I absolutely love. One of the things that uh, Cisco added this past year um, is it was originally from a company called Babel Labs, um, and this is background noise filtering, and it's really one of the best filtering uh, implementations I've seen. Uh, so I'm going to play that demo real quick, and then we'll come back here and talk about it a little bit more. This is easily one of my favorite WebEx demos because the technology works so well. If we have maybe a habitual paper crumpler in our office, crumpling papers while you're trying to hold a meeting. The last thing we want is that sound going out to everybody else in the meeting. So I've just turned on the remove background noise adjustment in WebEx. I'll take that same piece of paper and I'm going to crumple now, keep talking, and you're not going to be really distracted by that. Same goes for phones in the background. Uh, working from home, we have the dogs, the doorbells, everything else when we're trying to hold a meeting peacefully. Um, and it really is effective. Uh, just as one more demo, um, I have my mixer here. Maybe we need to make whipped cream for a coffee or in the meeting in the morning and forget that uh, we should have our mute on. We really shouldn't do this in the meeting anyway, but sometimes you really need your coffee and whipped cream. Let me turn on background noise. Now this is on again. I can keep talking and it's not picking up that sound. So I can make my whipped cream, drink my coffee, and everybody's happy. Maybe none the wiser, but you know, use your best judgment there. Back to the solutions lab. All right, Mike, I don't know about you, but I love making whipped cream for my coffee in the morning and <laughs> when I'm running late. <laughs> I was going to say it's that a... is the best demo I've seen in a long time with the mixer, right? I've seen the vacuum one. I've seen the paper one, right? But to have the mixer for the whipped cream was awesome. <laughs> Kudos <laughs> to you, buddy. Uh, sure thing. Thank you. Uh, that's just really how effective it is, and it, it's changed the way that I do meetings. I, I was always self-conscious about typing it on my keyboard when I was writing notes during a meeting, and so I'd mute myself, and then there's that you know, four-second delay when someone says, hey, Aaron, what about this thing? And so I'm trying to unmute myself and all that, and at this point, I leave myself unmuted because I can type. That sound's not going through. FedEx man shows up, which might happen any moment here, um, <laughs> honestly. Uh, my dog goes ballistic, and uh, again, it's cutting all of that out, so I don't have those same concerns. Um, it's it's drastically changed the way that I uh, attend my meetings because I'm not fully being mute on and off all the time. Yep, absolutely, and being that now that this is kind of included in the WebEx meetings portion, right, there's just a little icon you will click on or a checkbox to implement you know, the, the noise reduction there. It's really a big bonus, right? And, and and it even helps out even on a broader approach, right? Sure, I've got the Bluetooth headset on with the noise canceling on there as well. You can still hear me just as clear, but when you enable that even more, it actually takes out that background now. So the Babel Labs acquisition was just huge for us. 
Yeah, it, it absolutely was. I, I absolutely love the feature. Uh, now we have another one that's uh, really exciting. Uh, Cisco's been working on an AI uh, implementation within WebEx for a long time, and now we're starting to see the fruits of that labor. Um, as we have, see here on the slide, there's real-time translation. That's that's coming out now. Uh, so a lot of common languages. Uh, as you speak, you can turn on closed captioning. That's captioned. And each user can go in and select which language they want to see those closed captioned in. Tell, tell us just a little bit more of some of the assistant uh, capabilities here. Yeah, absolutely. So the assistant is a huge benefit, right? So at least from my standpoint, being a WebEx user every day, multiple times a day, right? The follow-up that's needed and, and where I'm going to follow up and remembering some of those action items that we came up with or decisions that were made has always been kind of difficult. I write everything down in a notebook and then kind of look for it, right? But with the assistant, most of you guys have seen this assistant kind of integrated into your WebEx over usually onto a left-hand side. It's like a little space icon guy, right? He kind of looks like at the top of a mushroom a little bit. Uh, he's got a head on a propeller, right? You would click it, it turns on the assistant. And what the assistant does is when you click onto that, it actually captures your voice, as you can see from the picture on the screen on the very bottom, where there's the verbiage on there. And it actually clicks that and keeps a record of that entire conversation that's there. And we also had the ability to say, all right, well, you could say, you know, remember that it is an assistant similar to kind of what you may have in your home, like an Alexa or in a Google in a way, right? So it's got some personality. You could actually say, okay, WebEx, tell me a joke and it'll actually pop up and tell you a quick little joke to get you kind of an icebreaker in a way. But it, it, it takes all of those notes and you could actually say again, as we're having a conversation, I could say, okay, WebEx, leave an action item for Aaron to say that we need to come up with this and it'll actually say action item or we've made a decision, right? And the word decision automatically prompts and it'll actually say decision next to it on the highlights and the transcript, right? Which is very cool. But one of the biggest things it was being a global counterpart and being able to talk to everybody. I don't speak a second language, unfortunately, right? But I sure. do present to people in Mexico and Latin America sometime. And one of the biggest things was we always needed a translator to help us with that. Sure, the presentations could be in English, but we always needed that translator. In this particular case, right, you can see English, Spanish, French, the common languages are on there. The Spanish comes in a, a, in, um, a, a big way for me, right? So now I can actually go in, I can continue to speak and present in whatever way I need to, and they end up seeing it in their language on their end through that closed captioning, right? And then also, at the end, when everything is recorded and submitted and we do a follow-up with that, right? I send the recording back, they see the recording and the translation in their language as well. So this is a huge help and time saver. And like I said, the big thing for me is the follow-up, right? Remember, this is all done out of your messaging client, right? So when we're done, right, I've got a great place to actually post that recording into the people that were on that session. We can do our follow-up together inside that space or that team's room that was in there, and we keep everything together, right? So I love the assistant, and like I said, for any of you that um, are currently not using it, test it out, right? It's there, give it a shot. Um, the translations are coming over the next couple of weeks, but all of that, okay, WebEx, tell me a joke, or the highlights and decisions and keywords are already there. But give it a shout, uh, give it a tryout, and let us know what you think. Yeah, and you touched on it a little bit. I, I've really started to enjoy the highlight feature uh, when I'm running a meeting, whether I'm the person talking or somebody else. I, I can see that text going by when there's something that I want to come back to. I can click on highlight, and it doesn't matter where, whether it's what I've said, what someone else has said. I can highlight that. I come back to it, and even after the meeting, that's set as a highlight item uh, that we need to look at because you don't necessarily want to read through the whole transcript. Uh, so you can hit those key points as you go along and go back to those as a team and really work on things. I, I would like that feature a lot. Um, now, along with that, uh, there's there's some smarter things happening here. Um, we've, we've introduced the ability to add silent feedback. So if someone's giving a presentation, it's, hey, I really agree with that. You don't want to interrupt them, but you can give them a thumbs up on the way. Um, now with the gestures capability, how does that change that a little bit? This is a new twist on, on that feedback. 
Yeah, this is kind of cool, right? So um, you have some people that are really big with emoji cons and things like that. And then you have some that are not, right? Um, but it really does consumerize the WebEx client a little bit, right? Similar to kind of what you've been having at home, what you have on your, on your iPhone, et cetera, right? So if we knew what we currently had at the bottom of WebEx was a reactions button, which is pretty much just a smiley face where you could click on a thumbs up or a golf clap or you know the celebrate button, whatever you need it to be. However, we've taken this to the next step and said, okay, the reactions were great, but most people don't wanna be able to click a button on the reaction, they wanna be able to do it. So now what you can actually do is you can actually, if you wanna give a thumbs up, you give the thumbs up and it'll show up on the screen as you can see on, on the screen as a thumbs up icon, shows up big on the right hand side and then kind of fades its way off. You can do the golf clap right like this and it actually does the golf clap. You can do a celebrate by raising your hands like this and it actually, and you can change the gestures for what you want them to be on your end. So if you want the thumbs up to be something different, you could actually make the thumbs up be something different on your end from a gesture standpoint. Um, but this just kind of really gives the ability for us now to say, hey, you know, someone's presenting. I don't want to wait till after this say to let them know that this is awesome or that's a good job, right? I can give them a thumbs up. They know they're doing a good job, makes them feel a little bit better. You've participated or kind of chimed in um, and gave a reaction. And one of the good things as well is important things here is that you can actually raise your hand. And it gives a raising icon, right, for your hand raising to let you know that maybe you have a question, right? Maybe you didn't post that question in the Q&A portion over on the side. Maybe you want to address that. And maybe they'll call you right out and let you open up your mic and ask if that question is theirs, right? So um, it kind of gives the presenter a little bit of feel of how everything is actually being presented. You know, um, I'm a fan so far. Um, we have the trial run on here, right? It's actually kind of cool the way that it works. Um, but I'm looking forward for everybody else to have this over the next coming weeks as well and see how it gets implemented. Yeah, this is actually kind of fun. And I, I've done a lot of presentations. And one of the things that I really enjoy about doing live presentations is that I'm seeing that feedback from the audience. So if I know if I'm connecting with someone, I know if I've made a good point that kind of fits to what they want. And I can even expand on those things. Uh, well, when we're working virtually like this, you don't always get that same sort of feedback, especially if you're right. showing, you know, you're, you're showing a presentation, sharing, you don't necessarily see everybody's faces, but this is just enough. Someone gives a thumbs up, something like that, it pops up in the top and I know, okay, this is, this is something we're touching on. And so it gives me a little bit more of that live feedback sort of feel as a presenter. Um, and I, I think I think it'll be very useful in those cases. Absolutely. Uh, so we have, uh, there's a couple other little features that uh, have been tossed in recently, and a lot of this has to do with uh, people working from home and now playing music from home. One of those is music mode. Uh, what does music mode offer uh, the, the musician that wants to play with somebody else online? Absolutely, right? So, you know, think of this music mode as a way to make sure we're hearing the music as it's actually being delivered, right? As most of you know, right, in MP3 file or things like that, the audio is very compressed. It sounds kind of gurgly a little bit when you pop it over, when you play something inside, right? In this particular mode, you can turn on music mode. And, you know, it, it, it boost the audio, so to say, and it takes it from that 128 megahertz kind of recording or presentation over to a 256 or a 320 type of megahertz, right? So that you hear it the way that it actually supposed to be sound or in a much better fashion. Now, one of the things where this is, and I'm going to give an example, is my son here is taking the flute and he has his flute lessons virtually, right? Now, yeah. when it comes to the flute lessons, right, we utilize WebEx for the particular flute lesson um, instead of the competitor product because we can actually hear what the actual music teacher is trying to convey. And she can actually hear the sounds better on her end, right? So it's not it's not easy to get a sound from a flute for a nine-year-old, right? He's not he's having a little for bit sure. of difficulty <laughs> getting his lips correctly where they need to be, but he is making some sound, right? And she can hear that sound and it kind of allows her to say you're almost there or hey there was a little bit of a sound you got it right this is the way it's supposed to sound and she's hearing it the way it's supposed to sound so i'm a big fan of music mode it's going to help out in the teaching from a virtual standpoint but 
When you're giving a presentation, you want to throw in some music here, click that music mode and people will actually hear it the way it's supposed to sign and not in a compressed kind of fashion. Yeah, and I've heard some very clear, crisp, wonderful examples of that, multiple musicians playing together and that music mode is passing on the higher quality of music. It's also allowing, I mean, obviously it's going to let in background noise, but it's it's there, it's uncompressed, it's unfiltered. Um, it's a really nice rep representation of sound. So uh, that was a neat one to add in. Um, one other big announcement that came out recently is the addition of roundtable meetings. Uh, and to your point, Mike, sometimes you're in a meeting and you have something to say. One of the things you can do is raise your hand. You can you know use the gestures now. But if we want to set up a meeting specifically so everybody has a say, uh, we have roundtable meetings. Now, explain a little bit how those are going to work. So you can actually have a, you know, in this particular case, you know, I, and I'll let this kind of lead into the breakout rooms that we're going to talk about in a second, right? Mm -hmm. Think about it in that same type of vein, right, where now you actually have this small roundtable session where, you know, you can actually have a participant come in and, you know, participate the way that they need to, react the way that they need to, and smaller size group instead of a broader meeting, right? But I'll let you lead into that breakout session because it's kind of around the same vein as to where Roundtable goes into, and I really like your breakout presentation that you're about to give. Well, you got it. We'll jump right into that then. And you're right, it, it combines a lot of those features in. So we're going to start our clip now. Uh, we're not on the WebEx platform here, so we did some pre-recordings of these, and this one is going to be specifically the breakout sections. Okay, jumping into this demo, we go up to the breakout sessions menu up here, click that, and we can enable the breakout sessions if they're not already enabled. Uh, let me do that again so we get our pop-up window. In this case, you can assign participants automatically or manually. If you're just creating one breakout session and you choose automatically, it'll automatically send them over. In this case, I want to move people around a little bit, so I'm going to do manually and create some assignments. Once we're in here, we do have some options. Uh, we have breakout session one. I want to rename that. Uh, talk of rocks, and I can add another session. Uh, we'll do talk of plants. Of course, you make that anything you want. And at this point, we can assign folks. So if I want to send Chris into the rock session, I can do that, assign him. And then I go down to Colleen and Skyler, and I can move them to the plant session if I want. Now at this point, we're all set to go. Uh, as a host, you can assign yourself to one of the sessions, or you can stay in the main win window with other people. Uh, so there's a lot of flexibility there. Um, there are some other settings you can choose here as well, such as allow, allowing attendees to return to the main meeting on their own. Um, you can also set the breakout session to go for a certain amount of time. So if you want to set a breakout session to go for five minutes to speak to something quickly, have everybody automatically shifted back to the main meeting, you can do that. So there's a lot of flexibility there. Uh, there is also a countdown timer to warn folks that the uh, meeting is about to jump back to the main session. In this case, I'm going to set that to 10 seconds. And we'll start our breakout session here. So at this point, WebEx starts to populate each of the rooms. And at this point, I am in the main room by myself. Uh, I do want to jump over, and I'm going to say hi to Chris first. Hey, Chris. Hey, Aaron. All right, so we've got our session here talking about rocks. Uh, and then we can, I can jump to the other breakout session if we want. Uh, and I'll do that quickly here and go to the Talk of Plants group. We'll see you soon, Chris. See you later. And here we are talking about plants with Skylar and Colleen. So as you can see, it's very simple to switch between the different groups and uh, uh, talk to everybody as you need as the main host presenter. They have some flexibility on their side to move between sessions if you set that as an option. Uh, and at this point, if I want to end the breakout sessions, I can do that. So I can end all breakout sessions. In this case, since I did not set a time limit on the breakout session, I would do that. And this will give us our 10 second warning. So here we are, it starts counting down. 
and uh, right at the end of this, then we'll get shifted back to the main meeting as one large group of people. There we are. We have everybody back together again. So the breakout sessions are really just that simple to set up. Uh, it's very easy to create, you know, the number of groups that you want, the number of people in each of the groups, sign everybody out, and some flexibility about moving to moving between them to help moderate conversations or whatever you need to do there. Uh, this works really well uh, with work to home scenarios where you may not have the option to send people to another room like you used to in the office. Uh, so it's, it's a really nice feature to use. And we'll jump back to the main solutions lab webcast now. All right, so there we are, the breakout sessions, uh, very easy to set up, very, able to, very easy to send people away to do other things. Uh, when we're working from home, you can play games with that, you can make it constructive, all sorts of stuff that you can do. Uh, where in an office, you might have been able to send people other places. Here, it's all in one, one uniform meeting, and we can call everybody back in when we need. Uh, so, Mike, anything else to add to that or roundtable mm -hmm. meetings? Uh, what do you see from your side? It's, it's a good thing from the breakout sessions, right? So, you know, we had our kind of first use last week with this, where we are actually in a training. There are about 40 people inside a training, and we wanted to break out those particular people into separate groups, right, for each one of them to go after each one of their solutions, right? And we kind of did that, and it worked very, very well. The teacher did not come into each one of the sessions, as you shown on your video, but he was able to actually send a broadcast to each one of those rooms as well um, to say, hey, we've got about five seconds left or we've got another three minutes left and we'll go from here. And then, you know, he was able to send that broadcast and then when it ended, everybody came back. Eventually, what we will also have inside these breakout sessions is the ability to whiteboard inside of those sessions. So there could be a leader, say the smaller group of four in their breakout session. There could be a leader where we actually have the ability to whiteboard whatever it is we're kind of discussing and then bring that back into the main meeting after we're done, right? So huge fan of breakout sessions. Um, love this feature. Very nice. I'm happy to hear about the whiteboards. That's one of the things I miss about the office. Uh, it's one of my favorite ways to give presentations is to sit with a whiteboard and and talk through things and uh, that's really cool that's that's going to be added in there absolutely uh, so we move on to the hardware side of things a little bit uh, there are some new products early last year there was the webex desk pro uh, which came out it's a fantastic all-in-one large desk unit that uh, supplements both your computer screen and acts as a webex endpoint um, Introduced uh, just recently now is the Cisco WebEx Desk. Uh, this is a smaller format of that. Um, so same basic features and everything, still becomes a part of your computer, becomes a part of your meeting life, uh, but it's there. It's a great whiteboard unit. It is a touch screen. Uh, anything else to add on the WebEx Desk that I might be missing here, Mike? No, absolutely. You're dead on with what you had, right? So think of it, all the features and functionalities from the Desk Pro come over to the desk in a smaller 24-inch format. Um, we should start seeing these around the end of May, early June, for them to come through, right? And eventually you'll see the sunsetting of the DX80 type of unit. And this is kind of that great replacement or something to think about replacing that DX80 unit that's there. Yeah, this is a perfect replacement for that DX80. It's it's right in that same size form factor, uh, and more. It's more capabilities. There's more settings there. Um, it's I've I've worked with a Desk Pro recently, and it's just infinitely better experience. I absolutely love the thing. Absolutely, S super cool. Yeah, uh, another cool item, uh, and this is really uh, a. a Pretty nice one. It's the WebXS Hub, and this is more of a hoteling uh, style uh, phone. So you can, with Cisco phones now, you can hotel a phone, which means that you can go in and sign in as a user, and it's just like your phone that was back at your desk. Well, this takes that another step further. And so if you have your WebEx enabled mobile phone, you put that on there, it identifies who you are, and there it is. It's your endpoint, it's your device. Uh, tell us a little bit about this one, Mike. So this is kind of, you know, it was really one of the best kept secrets, really, right? No, most of the time, our hardware is not really a good secret, right? Somebody hears about it, but this was a good kept secret. 
Um, as we start to think about moving back into the office, right, we're not quite sure if it's going to be a hybrid model, if there's going to be some reduction in real estate or however these desks are going to look like, right? But we really want it to be a safe and secure kind of portion to go into. So think of this as obviously like you can see from the picture, right? It's a little mini hub that comes into play. It allows me to walk up to that particular desk and make it my own for as long as I need it to be my own desk for the day. I can hook my laptop up to it through HDMI. I've got a charging station for my, you know, my iPhone or my Android device that's there. I've got a place for a pair of headset in the back, that preferably the 730. And I log into that particular device and it automatically, that is becomes my desk for the day, right? And when I'm done, I log out sanitize accordingly and I leave and the next person comes in and there's no remnants of me actually being at that desk, right? So once again, it is a device that's controlled through a, the control hub, similar to, you know, the WebEx desk or the headset itself, if you need be, right? But it becomes that really kind of cool hoteling desk and the ability for me to do it, right? And I think this is going to be pretty big looking at that safe return to work or that reduction of real estate or however we want the floor or the um, real estate or the office to look when we go back. I think this is going to be a great device. And once again, we should probably see this around the June, July timeframe to come out, right? So looking forward to this. Very nice. I think you're dead on with the hybrid work because we come back, uh, some of us may be in two to three days a week and at home the rest of the time. Um, and so based on desk configurations, needs in the office uh, and running 50% capacity potentially, depending on guidelines, uh, this really opens up that door where uh, you're working between home and work. And when you get to the desk, everything is there. It's your, you know, your work life is <laughs> there and uh, combined <laughs> with what you're doing. Um, so it, it, I, I don't know about you, it took me two, three months before I felt at home, at home uh, working. And so something like this, when I go back to the office, is just gonna make that transition that much easier when I work from two different places. Absolutely, and that's one of the biggest things is, you know, I work at home all the time, so it's kind of used to that message, but I do like to go into offices periodically, right? And one of the things that I never had the ability to do was say, where am I going to sit for the day, right? There's not necessarily <laughs> yep. a Cisco spot, so to say, uh, but now I know at least I could walk in. Maybe there's one of these at the desk and I could lock in it, uh, log in. And it would actually feel like it was my desk for the day and I'd have all the tools I would need to actually complete my day to day you know, activities. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, this next one, I'm very excited about it. Uh, this is the Cisco WebEx desk camera. It's a great price point. These are hitting, we're gonna start ordering these the 27th of this month, uh, and then they're gonna be shipping shortly after. So uh, here's a desk camera that can go on your screens, your laptop, whatever you wanna use. And it's a lot higher quality than a typical laptop camera might be. If it's a, in a WebEx environment, it could be administrative and controlled in, in your ecosystem, in your work ecosystem. Um, and likewise, if you wanna use it with a competitor product, you can. It doesn't need to be used just solely with WebEx. Uh, tell us a little bit more about this one, Mike. And I think you actually have one of these now, don't you? I was actually going to say, right, so we are super excited about this this little mini 4K camera, right? And between you and me, this, this space has been flooded, right? When everybody went home Absolutely. with the pandemic, right, everybody was searching for a webcam. When schools went through, uh, I will be the first to tell you that I paid $250 for a USB $50 camera for my yep. kid to be able to do that from home, right? So the demand was there. And we never had a really good small base product to fit into this, right? So I actually do have one of the cameras here, right? So as you can see exactly from the picture, it is exactly how it's laid out, right? Great Cisco logo sure. on the top. It's got a little oomph to it, right? So it's very well constructed. It's got that basic kind of pad that we know with the lip up at the top place it on the edge of your laptop or whatever monitor you're gonna do, and then the base to kind of pop things through. In the back, you've got your, you know, USB-C type of connection, right? That's in here uh, for those guys that have it. Um, inside the box itself, you get this really cool kind of deployment guide, right? And to be honest with you, the deployment guide is very easy. It kind of lays out, here's the cables you're gonna use. Uh, here's how you set it up. It's got a little hole at the bottom of it to put onto a tripod. Um, so inside the box, you get the camera itself. 
Um, you get a USB, standard USB to USB-C type of cable, and then a USB-C oh. to USB-C cable as well. So very excited for these. And the good thing, there will be ample inventory, right? So on the 27th of January, these things go live and are orderable. And like I said, we will get as many units as we can inside the distribution machine itself, but there will be ample, ample inventory available for you guys, right? So um, bring them on board, check it out, right? You know, um, list cost of like, I think it was $449, but after discount, it brings it down to around that $150, $160 range. Don't quote me on that, but I think that's where it comes in to be. Um, so I'm super excited for you guys to get a hold of this. Um, I can tell you personally, I've hooked it up to my Mac that I have here. Um, the Mac you're seeing now, right? That's the camera I'm on now, a little yellowish in a way, right? Kind of gives you that, but it, it, it's clear. Soon as I poke this up to the system, I automatically felt like I had one of those new light rings that everybody has shining onto me. So it made me more presentable. It actually made me look a little bit better, which was good um, and, and brought everything out a little bit more. So we're super excited to have it and I can't wait for you guys to try it. So bring one on board on the 27th. Perfect, thank you. Yeah, I, I think the quality is just hand, hands and feet above uh, regular laptop uh, camera. Um, I had to ditch mine very, very soon after COVID. It was, it was just too grainy and dark, and it made my moderately bright room look that much darker. So it uh, had to go. <laughs> so these are great. Um, we're going to move towards wrapping up a little bit. I will make one more quick hardware mention. There is a WebEx wireless phone that was just released. There's two models of it. These are IP rated. Uh, so they are, you know, water, moisture, dust, uh, very resilient to that. Um, and those will, there's going to be more information coming about those in coming weeks. Um, and then uh, I do also want to mention that we have... Uh, licensing available now in our cloud marketplace. This is another part of DNH, and it makes ordering licensing that much easier. There's Umbrella and some other security products that are moving up there. And uh, applicable to both of this, we have uh, WebEx meetings and WebEx calling already live on the uh, marketplace. So this is a place for you to go. You can build your quotes and, and place an order directly from that interface. Um, which really simplifies the order quote process. Uh, it's a very manual process when you order the old way, uh, but for a simple order like this, you can put together WebEx calling and uh, order that through the marketplace. So I wanna make sure you guys know about that. If you're interested, uh, you can contact our cloud team, certainly contact us and we can get you in touch and that'll work as well. Um, but as you can see, there's a lot of exciting new features, uh, great meeting equipment. And there's so much more to come. Uh, Cisco's doing a lot of work on features and capabilities within WebEx and the hardware line that supports it. Uh, so, so we're only gonna see this continue to get better. Um, we're a little bit past, word, but we do wanna jump into question and answer session here and answer some of your questions. Uh, we'll run this right up to about uh, three o'clock Eastern time, and then we'll cut off after that. But uh, let's jump into a few of the questions here, Mike, and uh, see what we have. All um, right. And I'll pass these back and forth a little bit. Uh, ah, here we go for Mike. Uh, what kind of lighting are you using? <laughs> so I'm in the living room, right? And I've got this kind of uh, LED kind of light up above. Um, you know, it, it gives it that that um, kind of yellowish factor, right? Um, but what I'm finding out now is that I'm sitting at home is that um, I brought in some hue lighting as well, right? Where I used one of those hue bulbs that I hooked into a lamp. And now I have the ability to change that lighting from maybe yellowish to a more energized or a reading kind of light. And it changes accordingly. Um, but right now it's just an LED, LED kind of light and it's got a little bit of a yellowish tint to it. But when I did hook up that 4K camera to it, that yellowness did appear uh, or, or did disappear. Nice. Yeah, it's definitely sharp. Uh, let's see here. The the desk camera, uh, also compatible with Teams and Zoom. I'll take this one yep. uh, very easily. Yes, it becomes an extension of your computer. So when you use it with Windows or Mac, uh, you plug that in, and it becomes another camera option that you have in your system settings. So it becomes part of the OS, and uh, you just simply choose that camera, and it'll work with Teams, Zoom, um, any of those major meeting products, including WebEx, of course. Yeah, jump down here. Uh, could we have an NFR special pricing to purchase some cameras for our office? Uh, 
I'll answer that one again very easily. Yes, uh, that is available. As long as you're a registered partner with Cisco, there's a little bit of a step to set up for the NFR program. Once you're set up there, you're ready to go. Uh, typically, the discounts will be in the 70% range, sometimes a little higher. Um, so if you do want assistance with that, uh, our contact information will be uh, at the end of this session. Um, contact us, we'll help you get set up for these cameras. Uh, NFR is a great way to get those in your hand and uh, try them out. Let's see, uh, PSTN question for John. Uh, does the PSTN solution still require a one-for-one -one seat or can you share a virtual hot group? It is a one-for-one -one type of seat still, right? We are looking into the hot group there, John. Uh, we should have some good information for you following the end of this quarter, which is Friday, moving into the beginning of Q3. But by maybe the middle of next month, I should have some really good information for you as well on that. All righty. Uh, let me see. I'm trying to find the answer for the next one. I'm not finding it there. So uh, someone asked what the SKU is on the desk camera. Uh, we can follow up with you directly on that. Uh, it's it's a fairly simple school, SKU, but if you do uh, search for uh, WebEx desk camera data sheet, that'll, that'll pull up the information you need, and the SKU will be available there. And certainly reach out to our team. We'll get that part number for you. Uh, let's see here. Down a little bit. Uh, does this also imply that WebEx is 4K capable, desktop recording, or even cloud recorded meetings? Do you want to take that one, Mike? Yeah, it, it's a great question, right? So if we look at all of the devices that are currently out there, they're all 4K capable. A lot of the monitors that people are using are 4K rendering as well. What we're finding out on our end, at least on my end, is that the recordings seem to be coming in at around 720, right? So um, will we actually get to the point to where we're you know, 4K or 1080? Absolutely, the team is diligently working on that, um, but obviously, when you connect your WebEx or your camera up to that 4K device, it does 4K that way, but the recordings currently are at 720, which to the naked eye, not too bad, right? So 720 currently, 1080 4K coming. All right, perfect. Uh, let's see, does each participant need a license or is it like the competitor where only the host needs a license? I'll uh, take that one. With with WebEx, it is with WebEx meetings specifically. It's just the host that needs the license, so they're basically able to schedule, create meetings, and as long as they have a license, they can do that. Participants are strict participants, and uh, no license are needed for them, whether they're in your organization or outside your organization. Uh, no licensing needed at all for for participants. So. That's fairly easy. If you only have two people in your uh, company that need to run meetings, you license for those two people, you're good to go. Uh, oh, actually, I don't know this one, Mike. Uh, maybe you've run across it. Uh, can notes or video be recorded on the breakout sessions? I didn't try that out yet. So currently, no, right? And that's a great question and great um, feature that needs to be added, right? So. You're not the only one to ask that. So there will be the ability eventually for the breakout session itself to be recorded as well, right? And capture all of the notes and things that are in there. So coming soon, hold that thought because we definitely something that's needed. Excellent, sounds about right. Uh, let's see here, are these SKUs available on a database? We don't have a full list of SKUs yet. Some of these were just announced or so waiting uh, some information there. Once we do have them, they will be live up online on the DNH website. Uh, certainly reach out to us and even just two to three weeks time, most of these we should have. The cameras, of course, are we have the part numbers now because they're uh, shipping almost immediately. Um, but some of the other parts will take just a little bit longer before we get those, but happy to help you with those as they come out. Uh, here we have a question. Oh, Mike, this is a, a great one for you. Um, language translation is a great idea. Does it use Google Translate to do this? Also, what languages are in the pipeline? <laughs> <laughs> so to be honest with you, I'm not quite sure what the translation or who, how that translation is coming through in the back end. Um, I will find that out for you and, 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 and let you know what kind of response we get, right? Um, currently in the assistant for the translation, there's about, um, I think there's 10 languages that are included in initial, which is an additional uh, 11 to 15 are coming out. With the follow-up question, I'll send you a complete list, Aaron, to get back to the team okay. with all of the additional languages that are coming out with the dates they're supposed to be coming out and the software release. 
All right, perfect. Uh, let's see here. Related to that, do you have anything I can show regarding an assistant for uh, translation to other colleagues? Uh, there is a data sheet available for that, and I, I know there's a lot more documentation that's coming. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Mike, but pretty soon on Cisco uh, Sales Connect, uh, there should be a lot of partner resources for uh, assistant and translation. I don't know if they're up there yet. Have, have you seen those at this point, Mike, or are we still waiting? So so yeah, we're still kind of waiting. We'll actually see them come the end of the uh, or the beginning of the new quarter for us, which is starting on Monday. So on Monday, you'll see a a lot of new information on the assistant as well as all of the languages, which is where I'm going to get those information for the next the previous question. And then um, there'll be a demo on there, a, a presentation, and then how you guys can actually right. bring this in house under the NFR type of model as well, so that you can offer trials to particular end customers as well. Excellent. Very good. And for those, of, actually, that's a great point. For those of you that don't know, there is a partner-specific program for WebEx. Uh, Cisco wants to make sure that you have your hands on it, you're using it. Um, some of the features are available through NFR. Some of them are completely free to you. Uh, we can help you get set up with that if you don't already have your own partner version of WebEx, but uh, it does exist. There's some great discounts that go along with it, uh, and we can get you set up with that. And, and part of that whole ecosystem is that you end up with a partner control hub where you can see all of your customers that you've onboarded. So uh, if you've onboarded 20 customers, you have all their dashboards easily accessible. Uh, one of them calls you up and needs uh, a phone number changed on somebody or, or you know something changed that you want to take care of as part of your service to them. That's all available to you through the control hub. So it's a really nice partner system that Cisco has set up for that. And uh, we can help you get going if you don't already have it. A uh, little bit, another of a pricing question. Uh, does not-for-profit organizations have special pricing? Uh, we have many customers that fit that uh, role. Uh, at this point, no, there's nothing for uh, nonprofit necessarily. Um, however, depending on the type of installation you're doing, the over a dollar value, uh, there are deal registrations available for that. Uh, Cisco does offer quarterly fast track pricing, which is basically an instant rebate that's available on the DNH site. Um, so, so if you look at a, a WebEx endpoint uh, from one quarter to the next, you'll see that price adjust a little bit. And that's always going to be that uh, uh, quarterly rebate called Fast Track that goes in and out. So that's commonly there on uh, products that we're pushing. And then definitely if, uh, if you're over the $10,000 list price range, uh, there are some uh, deal registration opportunities as long as you're a select partner. So uh, talk to our specialist team about that. They can kind of help assist you and get the best price for your specific customers, whether they're federal, nonprofit, or otherwise. Let's see what else we have here. Uh, when will the desk camera be available? Uh, Quick recap on that, uh, we're, they're orderable on the 27th. Uh, we are expecting shipments very soon after that. So as soon as uh, 27th hits, uh, DNH is placing new orders for those. Uh, we hope to have a lot of those in stock. We're, uh, we're gonna stock up on a specific one. Let's see, oh, ah, Mike, great one. Uh, does this replace Microsoft Teams? <laughs> um... My answer will be, hey, yeah, of course it does, right? <laughs> but I, but I know everybody might have some, you know, some Microsoft Teams clients here, and maybe you like it, right? So um, I want to say, let's work hand in hand, right? It doesn't necessarily replace Teams, but there is a way for us to incorporate methodologies and different things into it, so that it coexists in a Teams environment, right? So depending on sure. what you are standardizing on on your side. Right, there is a way to get the two to work together, um, but ultimately, like I said, from my standpoint, I'd love to see it replace Teams in fully. But I understand that there are some things um, and reasoning behind people not being able to replace it with Teams, but um, it can work hand in hand or cohesive together. Yeah, indeed. And if, if someone has had a bad experience on Teams or, or just you know they want to try something else this covers a lot of those major points and on the administrative side it can be tied back to exchange so you have that user control uh, there are security features built in with um, document sharing and stuff like that so a lot of those core features are there in the webex product as well um, so so it's a good competing product uh, in that space 
Um, let's see. Uh, can you show the unified app for an example? Uh, we're not able to do that uh, right at this time in this format, but uh, I'll reach out to the person that's asked this. If there's anybody else that um, has this as well, reach out. Happy to walk you through what the interface looks like. Um, but it, either way, what you can do is go to webex.com, download the uh, the WebEx app. It might still be labeled WebEx Teams, but I think they've changed it just recently. But download the WebEx app and take a look at it from there. Um, as you get set up with this, if you already have WebEx, uh, if you're using WebEx Teams, you'll notice the application was renamed to just WebEx uh, very recently, and uh, as long as you've updated. And so that WebEx, that's the product, that's the unified app. So likely chances you already have it, you're already using it, and it was seamless enough. Uh, you may not have even noticed on that one. Uh, let's see. Yeah, here's a good question, Mike. Uh, WebEx has seen losing market share uh, to some of the other competitors. What real different, differentiator does Cisco provide to make it attractive to business? I can think of a number on offhand. Uh, what are you thinking of? Yeah, so it's it, it's a great question, right? So WebEx itself, obviously, we, we lag behind a little bit on some features and functionalities that came out, right? I believe everything that you've seen today with the gestures, the translation, the assistant, uh, the unified app brings us far above where we need to be to compete with the competition, right? Remember the features and functionality is not really the reason why somebody particularly uses a conferencing system. It's the experience that they have when they use it, right? This is right. really simple to use, right? It has that Apple-esque kind of motion, right? As I said, when I hooked up this 4K camera to the MacBook, it just worked. WebEx recognized it, boom, I clicked the button, I was off to the races, right? So it comes down to the experience here. Um, and I believe with everything that we kind of talked about today, uh, along with all your existing devices and things that you have, it really resonates it. Um, and we're starting to see those um, those figures come through, right? And people are starting to really um, see the benefit of WebEx and that one type of solution across the board when it relates to collaboration. All right. Uh, one, we'll do uh, one final quick question here and then uh, kind of wrap things up. Uh, can you speak to the built-in microphone if there is one? I, I think they're talking about the desk camera specifically, Mike. Uh, do we have a mic on that one? Yeah, so there is a built-in mic into the camera as well, right? It's, it's, it's hidden underneath and everything just like the rest of the Logitech cameras or the other um, camera suppliers that are out there similar to your Logitech uh, that's out there, right? Um, real vibrant right i didn't have any um issues with just using the camera as my microphone itself um but when the data sheet comes out on monday there'll be a really good section specifically on the integrated microphone that's inside there that you'll be able to pull down from sales connect excellent all right so we'll have a lot more information on that it does include it uh and my experience with Cisco hardware, it's going to be a lot better than the standard built-in laptop mic. We'll, we'll test all that out, of course, in our own lab inside, but uh, I'm excited to uh, get my hand on one of those. Um, so we are going to wrap up here. I want to really thank everybody for attending. Uh, just a few notes. We do have some Solutions Lab uh, events coming up. On February 18th, there's a Pro AV panel discussion specifically. Keep an eye on the web uh, on the DNH website for that. Uh, you'll be able to register. Uh, February 23rd, we have an eSports panel discussion, so we're going to cover some of the eSports stuff that's uh, really growing uh, in the marketplace right now. Uh, and then later on in April, we're going to have a Threadcast again, and that'll uh, feature Cisco and many other vendors that DNH carries across the board. Uh, so that'll be a really nice uh, uh, production to put together there. Um, so overall, thank you very much, Mike, for joining me today. It's, as always, a pleasure working with you. Uh, I've really enjoyed uh, going through the new WebEx features with you. And we've just scraped the surface. There's there's even more than we could cover in this little amount of time. Uh, but thank you. No, thank you very much for having me, guys. I appreciate your time. Um, and like I said, I'm looking forward to all of these features and functionality along with the new devices. And remember, the innovation is continuing, right? It doesn't stop here. Much more to come over the next couple of months. Um, you'll see a lot more here, right? So I'm super excited. Thank you. Great.
Excellent. Thank you, Mike. So there's a few questions we couldn't quite get to in time. We are going to circle back. We'll uh, get in touch with you directly about those and make sure everything is good. Uh, but on behalf of Cisco and DNH, I want to thank you very much for attending the first uh, Solutions Lab of 2021. Have a great year, everybody.